I can't do this. I can't write a great article. It's too hard. Why can't I just fabricate facts to make the stories more interesting? That would sell papers. That would also go against the founding ideals of this newspaper. Who are you? Nah, I'm just some old guy. Come with me. Where are we going? You know, the New York Times had a lot of history behind it, and we're gonna explore that history. Here's the morgue. <coughs> and here's the archives. And this is the man who turned this paper around. Ed Asner? What? No! This is Adolf Fox. Greatest editor and publisher of the New York Times? Man, you're an idiot. Let's begin. <laughs> Adolph Simon Ox was born in 1868 in Cincinnati, Ohio, and lived in Knoxville most of his childhood. He began his career in journalism early when he quit school to take jobs as a newsboy. Extra, extra! Century ends in 30 years! Hey kid, let me see that. It's true. And a printer's assistant. Let's see what you've got here, Adolph. Editor is a big fat loser. Excellent reporting. Ox could see the effects of yellow journalism in America, and he knew he could stop its evil grasp. At the age of 19, Ox moved to Chattanooga, a very small city with a very long name. I mean, seriously, Chattanooga. They might as well call it zippity doo or yippee or Milford. Anyways, he purchased half the floundering newspaper, the Chattanooga Times. <laughs> There's that word again. I swear, it's just... With a special brand of journalistic integrity in class, he turned that paper around. You there! Get to the fire on Main Street! You! Start working on tomorrow's layout! And you! Don't eat that! You don't know where it's been! In 1996, Fox saw an offer to purchase the New York Times, a paper struggling with financial trouble as well, competing with newspapers like The World from Joseph Pulitzer and William Randolph Hearst's Journal. He stuck to his morals, separating news from editorial opinion, in a time where libel was considered hip and trendy. The New York Times readership skyrocketed. Between 1897 and 1920, circulation grew from 9,000 to 780,000 readers. The paper lived by its motto, all the news that's fit to print, as opposed to its former masthead. Even Pulitzer and Hearst had to hand it to Hawks. Brilliant! Brilliant! Fox continued his dedication towards bringing readers hard news instead of glorified sensationalism until his death in 1935. The New York Times is still run in the Hawks family name, but Adolph Fox will always be remembered as a great man who loved to party. Now do you know why I can't go and tarnish the name of this great paper by making up fake stories? No. No I don't. This is stupid. You're stupid. I quit. I'm going to go work for the New Republic. Damn.